So this is the super deluxe composting toilet slash bidet system. I'm going to show you how to make this from regular household items. And uh, the thing that inspired this was an article that I read uh, about a, a guy that survived an apocalyptic type of situation. And ever since I read that, I he talked about sanitation and about you know using the bathroom somewhere and he said it was a messy business and I'm like man if we ever face something like that if we're ever camping or anything I want to try to solve this I've been thinking about this for probably three or four years honestly to think of the best way of doing this and honestly there could be a better way of doing this but this is the idea I'm going to show you step by step on how I did this and um, you could probably think of better ideas after this and it's completely sanitary you don't have to use any toilet paper and uh, you could use it anywhere you could use it in your regular house a shed a garage um, or camping anywhere and it's really sanitary super clean and I'm looking at the present things that we're going through and the future things near future actually if uh, we start thinking about these things now of how we can get off-grid and start uh, thinking of better technology that we do, that we can use these days we don't have to go back into the 1800s or anything we we have new technology we can make uh, things that are just way better off-grid and we can feel clean we can feel good we can don't have to uh, feel like we're in survival mode all the time if the power goes out so this is the idea behind this and everything else I do around this house is basically this same idea. So I'm always constantly thinking of ways to do um, this type of thing. Also, I'm making a little portable water heater that you can make from regular household items from, and it'll work on a battery. So you can have a hot shower, nice warm shower just from that. Hey, this is uh, my plans for my composting toilet slash bidet system. And this is a pretty simple concept. I'm just going to show you the most important parts. Um, pretty much any toilet seat will go on these, on these sinks. I'll have to put some metal bars across to support this seats and stuff but I had to get a sink with the drains up front because I'm going to cut a hole here and this is where the composting toilet will go for the solids to drop straight through and then I'm gonna bend this up so that's the only modification there and then the rest of it will just be the drains connected together for the for the urine and for any wash from the bidet system. So that's just the idea. I'll show you a couple of things on how I measured this. It's really hard to get an exact measurement when it's curved like this. And because there's no reference really except for maybe the bottom there. So I've used that bottom edge for getting a measurement for the this cut there and then here I just kind of can get a measuring tape rather than a measuring stick but um, just kind of did that <clears throat> these are just cuts that I'm gonna need in order for this part to fold in and on this I just kind of measured um, lined it up with the same drain so I knew it was straight so this is how I got the straight angles. Um, I want to bend it as close to this drain as I can. So those are just a few things that I did just to get these measurements and I just put this blue tape around it. So I have a good visual of where I'm gonna cut this thing. I just used this uh, grinder and I had to use this a uh, sawzall reciprocal saw just to get these little parts this is hard to reach a little bit but I wanted to show just um, 
exactly how I cut this because I I have to get these cuts so that this will allow this to bend down so I had to cut that down like that and then I guess I'll show you underneath so when this folds up this will have something to attach to on the side if that makes sense so I just wanted to show you as, as it uh, sits right there so that if you take this idea and do it yourself you'll know where the cuts are and then this will this uh, bend will just go straight across got it somewhat got it started there and these cuts right here kind of helped guide the crease here so I'll get this better um, but you could see exactly what I'm picturing now and I'll have a square bucket let's go right under that so it's looking pretty good and then I could bend this however far I need is you need to get it right between so girls and boys can use so the separator can be separating both sexes pretty well I know boys don't have to worry as much but but if yeah I just have to adjust that but um <clears throat> yeah, I like these tidy cat buckets and um, I just like how they're square and so it happens to fit with this thing um it's going to be on the bottom here but it's it's nice and squared it fits a lot better than you know a typical five gallon circle style in there so it fits a lot better than a five gallon even though you could use one I'll probably cut the the sides up a little bit more so it fits down further down like that. I had to cut a little triangle here. There was it was uh, hidden on the side of that, so that's that's all I did there. I had to figure out what I needed to get to support the seats on there and that was a that was a challenge I thought um, I found this uh, sheet here it's galvanized metal and I'll I turn that around I just traced out the the pattern there so I'll cut that out and put that right in here I'll use pop rivets around so I feel good about that I knew I had to get something waterproof and something rigid enough so that was the best idea I've had for this so this is the next piece I had to cut out this is just to make room for the for the buckets see how that fits right there struggling with the one-handed thing so and you can see the the round bucket also works so you could use either one it's just the rectangle one works better so you got the sheets of metal cut out 
and now I'm just mounting the toilet seat and tracing out the the holes here so I just temporarily bolted them down and traced it so <clears throat> so while I had those clamps on I I just uh, drilled all my holes all around for the rivets and I'll probably rivet it down and then cut these holes out Alright, there it is. I went ahead and uh, I sat on it. It's solid as can be, so I probably don't need any more rivets. After I get the holes cut, I'm, I might do more of them if it's kind of sagging, or I might do some down the middle too. Forgot about that. Looks, looks uh, pretty good though. I feel really good about that. Looks solid. Alright, I think that I solved the problem of finding something that will support this composting toilet bidet system. And it's one of these uh, shower chairs. And just as they are right now, you could probably even modify this as a composting bidet system like I'm doing. And I like it because it's waterproof. Uh, it's all over the place. You know, it's everything's waterproof and then you got adjustable legs on there up or down so if the bucket is higher or lower you could adjust that so I think this will work I might have to modify this quite a bit at least the frame but I'm gonna attempt and I am this is the best way I've been able to solve this problem so I got the legs on there. That was uh, pretty exciting. I'm glad that worked. I used the existing holes and uh, just put a bolt through there. And I just love that you could adjust those legs. Because then if I have a bigger bucket, taller bucket, or a shorter one, I could just adjust for that. Totally awesome. I have to get some brace. I have to brace on the side of it because it gets a little wobbly. So, looking good though. That was the other problem I needed to solve were the legs. For the braces on the side, I couldn't reuse. Couldn't reuse these. It was just going to bend it way too far, and it's going to just warp it. So I found some extra galvanized pipe and just bent it and then just crushed the ends of it, drilled the hole, and then I'll drill a couple of bolt mounts here. So that's all I did with that. That should give us enough stability just from that. Plus, I didn't really want to modify that anyway, because this is normally, I don't know, 75 to 100 bucks, and that's pretty good condition, so if I ever want to sell it again, I can get that money back. So here's the side bracket completed. Just show you where I put the bolts and everything. I had to put a little spacer in there to... Uh, because these pop rivets were right there, so I had to give it a little bit of space. But it's really rigid now, so I think that makes that complete as far as the legs, which is a huge relief. Glad I got that figured out. Well, I got one of these cut out. I had to be really careful with this uh, skill saw, uh, just because it's it could go like this like crazy so I it just has a lot of play in it when you're going this is the best thing I have to cut with it honestly but I didn't really have anything better so I just took it slow and um, just drilled a hole to start it with 
So I got them cut out and I got the the uh, the edges buffed off so the burrs don't stick out there. Um, I have to explain the next step a little bit. Um, this diverter plate wall, whatever you want to call it, is too high, so I need to cut it down across like right there. And I need to figure out exactly where it needs to divide. And and then I'll have to uh, pop rivet a couple rivets there to hold it up. But uh, I need to... I'm wondering if I can uh, cut it here and then kind of crease it back or fold it back so that it has like a kind of a hook onto the the bucket that's there. I'm kind of debating back and forth, but that's what I have to do here. And I'm trying to be careful not to bend this back and forth too much or else it's going to get the metal to metal fatigue and it'll just start breaking. Um, so let me see if I could just bend this up. So I want as far as up as I can. Be like right there I guess. And pop rivet right down there. You can see that little edge so it'll hold it up. So this is what I mean when the bucket is in there. Maybe I can uh, fold it down over so it just kind of has a kind of a hook or hold on to hold on to that bucket. And I wouldn't need to worry about that gap in between here. stuff getting in between that. So if I do do that, it'll be beneficial. Hold it in plus covering that gap. Alright, I'm going to get a little detailed on this just because uh, I, in case you want to do this, you can learn from me for my learning curve. Um, all I did was uh, notched it here. I'm going to just, so I cut that little triangle out of there and that should give me enough cut out to, to bend this back. Let's do the same over there. I got that little piece cut and I have a line here. I'm just going to start bending this back. And I just, want to, I just want you to see what it looks like every step I take, so it could get complicated. So this is what it looks like. I had to improvise uh, with a couple of tools to get it started and then uh, use that too. Once I got it to a point, I was able to bend it all the way. And I'll bend it even more once I get everything situated, but... Um, that's what it looks like. So this is the most complete I was able to get it today. So much work and just figuring out the screws and figuring out plumbing. That's what I'm going to do next. But I'll just show you what it looks like so far. It's finally able to uh, rivet those side where the diverter goes can't see in there because it's too dark but I was breaking drill bits and everything and man that was tough but to mount this toilet on toilet seat on better than that and then I'll get another toilet seat just like this so it's uh looking pretty good so far I probably don't even need these seats on there because one of the ideas I had was to just take this thing I cut out of there, make it so it'll just fit right on top of that. 
because I know some uh, composting toilets have that where they can cover it up and they just take it off when you're going to use it. Um, I don't know if I'll do that, but it's all up to you whatever you want to do. Hopefully this gives you some good ideas though. So I just want to point out, I bent this all the way down so it hooks onto that bucket. And it keeps it pretty uh, stable there. So that was just a add a little feature. So the drain part of this is just your standard seat sink attachments. And you're not going to need the P-traps or anything because this is going to go directly outside into the ground or into a bucket or whatever you want. So um, on this part of it, on the tube, wherever it comes out, I had to figure out how to attach this. And this is something um, that I thought was... I need to explain a little bit just because there wasn't really anything I could find that I that would do what I wanted um, this tube is going to go down the the existing drain in my shower plus I'll be able to have this and uh, portable and take it wherever I want and then have this tube go somewhere on the campground ground or the a bucket or something so I needed this to be um, adaptable to whatever um, I couldn't find any attachments that go went from directly from this type of attachment to this um, I did have stuff like this um, to attach but what I didn't like was that as this inserts inside that there's a little lip for stuff to catch onto. So this tube is basically a little bit smaller than this attachment and I just put a heat gun to this and got it really soft and stretched it over slid it on there. Um, I, it, it was hard to do because it was I had to stretch it quite a bit but that's what I wanted to do. It helps me feel like you know it's got a simple direct connection there and it just goes into the tube directly so it looks like a simple thing but I had to figure that out because I'm inventing something it doesn't exist out there there's no parts there's no kit or anything so that is it so this is what it would look like as it's put together um, I don't have this side done yet because I have a different idea I want to do. Um, I'm going to tell you the difference between a regular bidet system that you could buy and there's all sorts of designs out there for that. The dials on the side and everything. It's attached to the toilet, it's very convenient, it's there all the time and uh, you just turn switches, you don't have to mess with anything else. But other people, they use this regular sprayer like this it looks like a little uh, kitchen sink sprayer but uh, this one's a lot more powerful it's it'll sting if you if you you know push it on full blast but what I like about it is that it's really tough it's made out of you know metal throughout the whole thing and it could it could take some abuse and this will be way better in like camping uh, situations where you're lugging around this is banging around it hits the ground whatever and this is a lot more reliable I actually, I've actually used this uh, in my house and that's what some people do some people prefer that and there's a girl actually di displaying on how to use this I'll put that link down below and she she uses this all the time she doesn't use toilet paper and uh, <clears throat> So this is what I, I've I've liked this. Um, you can you you can actually um, to not have it so powerful. You have to be careful with the you know depressing the lever 
uh, however much you want. But some people put a little valve on it so they could adjust the pressure that way. They could just turn it down a little bit. And that's what I'll probably do with that. But I do like that. I've used that a lot. And um, uh, so, but the difference with a regular bidet system is that that you install on your toilet is that these are cheap, cheap materials, and it's more expensive. So this was like thirty bucks, maybe a little bit more than that, thirty something. And I bought a couple of these, so I'd have two of them. But I've heard that some of these have, you know, wherever the water goes in and the seals and stuff they start leaking over time and that's probably the case I don't know it's it's made out of you know plastic even those knobs are plastic so it it is very prone to to, to breaking so it probably wouldn't be the best for like a camping thing um, you have to kind of baby it along as you use it but it is convenient I mean it's already right there you don't have to touch anything else or try to reach back there like you do with the bump gun and it's just right there and with the control knobs this has got a cell phone holder I don't know I don't know why they, that they think that's an extra feature I don't know but this is uh, the difference that I've seen I've used those before I I do like them I think they're convenient but you're gonna spend a lot of money on something that's quality for that kind of bidet system, so I would have, I would actually buy one of those bum guns uh, just to have on hand, even if you don't use it right away. I would have it on hand. I mean, because you could like spray down everything, get it clean after you use it. Um, you know, if, if things get messy, you could still clean things up all around and 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 have it as a cleaner. Maybe even double as a shower. I don't know. You could have it as camping, and then you just shower with it just thought you know but uh one of the things i had i wanted to set up was and i'm just sh i'll show you when this is done but i want to show you the concept of this now that we're talking about sanitation so this pump will probably go below this bidet system with a battery and what i'm going to do is i'll just have this hose hooked up to the bidet side and then the inlet is going to be a uh, go to the water tank or water source, whatever it is. So my water source is actually going to be probably a bucket like this. And what I'm going to do with this bucket, you could have plain water in there or whatever. But you could put some, some kind of antibacterial something in there. And my idea was colloidal copper. And if you haven't seen any of my videos... So if you haven't seen any of my videos about colloidal silver and colloidal copper, uh, then I would watch those. Or maybe I'll do another video on that because uh, separately for this. Because this is something that is I feel like is revolutionary. Because we're always looking for some sanitation. And uh, it's what if it runs out or what if you can't go buy it? What if, you know, we've seen that already. So... What I want to do with colloidal copper is it has the same uh, properties, antibacterial properties, as colloidal silver. Colloidal silver has many uses. You've probably have heard of that. Uh, you could do it as uh, medicinal purposes. You can, uh, you know, clean out your sinuses. Uh, you can kill bacteria uh, that is causing sore throats or a cough or something like that. So. Uh, colloidal silver is very handy, but you can't get silver everywhere. It's it's more expensive. But colloidal copper is made the exact same way. You can make it yourself. You can make gallons and gallons and gallons of it for nothing. So that's why I really like it. And copper is actually used in a lot of sanitation purposes, but we we either lost that knowledge or we don't know about it. And I they used to make. Uh, like sewage drainage pipes, you know, f out of copper pipes, and uh, that copper is antibacterial. So as soon as bacteria, viruses get on copper, it just kills it, and it's just a natural thing that happens with copper. So, and other metals too, but copper is just so abundant 
that that's why I want to use it but you can make colloidal copper just putting a couple wires get a 9 volt battery get a couple of wires on the positive negative put it in some water and you could start seeing the colloidal copper fall off of the wires and you can make colloidal copper for years and years and years and it's everywhere so that's why I love this idea so I'm gonna make this bucket and uh, have some colloidal copper in there and you and it'll be full of it so when this tube is uh, in there it's gonna suck up the colloidal copper and go through the bidet system and it'll be completely sanitary you know on your rear end or wherever you use it or uh, around the toilet or anything so it naturally just is uh, disinfecting as you're using it and uh, even if you use it for you know through the spray system just everywhere it just completely sanitizes it so if you just know about colloidal copper then you could have a sanitary situation in anything and it, you could use it for uh, kind of like colloidal silver too you could use it as a I put it a little spray bottle if I have a cold or if I have something that I start feeling in my sinuses I like spray in my nose and let it go back in there uh, or my sore throat or something like that and it'll it's antibacterial it'll it'll um, kill the bacteria and it'll help you recover faster and uh, I've swallowed some of it I mean it's not gonna hurt you I don't know what it's like if you you know swallow a whole bunch of it um, I probably it, it may kill uh, some good bacteria in your digestive system so kind of like colloidal silver you'll probably get the runs from it it's an antibiotic and if you're sick it's worth you know using just to get rid of the sickness but or prevent things so those are the the things that I'm going to be doing with this as a whole and uh, so hopefully you get a good picture of that and you have your own ideas of what you'd like to do